Today, I want to let you in on a secret that all of my professional game dev friends know about and use to finish their games. But first, we're going to start with a little bit of history. When I first started developing games, I was a little kid working on my Commodore 64. I said developing games, but I was really just screwing around trying to entertain myself because I'd already played through all three games that I owned and obviously couldn't buy any more. So I would write code in something that looked like this, some very simple basic that would allow me to make simple guessing games games or choose your own adventure type things. Eventually though, I got a hold of this, Gary Kitchen's Game Maker, which was a new tool that allowed me to do all kinds of things I couldn't do before. I could build 2D visual games like Pitfall or fun racing games and even a little Pac-Man clone. This wasn't possible for me with just code, with the existing tools that I had, but this new tool really made that possible. And over the years, the tools for game developers have changed drastically. Before, you had to create your own game engine, do everything from scratch, and build up your own tooling around it. But now game engines are readily available, like Unreal and Unity, so you don't have to go back and build these tools all yourself, but you will see that a lot of big game development companies still have a tools team, a team that's dedicated to improving the engine and improving their tooling so that their developers can work faster, get things done, and not miss any deadlines. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you're a AAA dev, get ready to share something really awesome with your tools team and make them happy. And if you're an indie dev, don't worry because this is going to apply to you and it's going to make it feel like you have that AAA dev tools team without having to hire anyone. The tool we're going to talk about today is Odin Inspector and Serializer. This is probably the most impressive tool for Unity, and it's the most popular one that I know of with just about every developer I know using this. It makes a huge difference in their day-to-day -day and speeds things up. Just by installing it, you'll get a lot of really cool features out of the box. You'll get things like a new improved list view that allows you to rearrange add things and insert stuff in the middle, and even have paging. You'll get enum dropdowns and support for paging, but there's a lot more to it. In fact, there's so much to it that they added a full getting started page to the editor just to show you all of the cool things that you can do. Now there's a lot here, but I wanna start with what I think is the coolest part, and that's the custom editors. If you open up the RPG editor sample project, you'll see that they've actually built out a full editor for characters and inventory. It's got these nice sliders that are added with a single quick attribute, and it's got icons, grids, everything that you could kind of need to view your character data. Let's see how you add a character by hitting create character. We'll name him Jason and watch as the character just appears in my list. I go back to the characters and Jason's here. I can go pick an icon for myself, give me a bow and set some stats. You can see just how nice this is. If I had to write the code for this editor, it would take quite a while and I haven't even taken a look at the inventory part. Now let's take a look at the items and then see what the code looks like for this as well. So in our items, we've got armor grouped, we've got some weapons here, and they've got some different stats, and then it looks like we have some consumables that also all have their different stats. So let's see what the code would look like. Think about what it would take to build this editor window for your game, and then open up this code script here, and we can see that there's really not very much to it. We've got the standard opening of an editor window thing, and you'll get that when you copy the Odin menu editor window default template. That's just the part to pop open the window, but the part that's doing the work is actually right here. You build a menu tree by giving it the things that you need, just calling tree.add. Here we're adding all of the characters and finding all of the assets of script, the scriptable object assets of type character that are in this folder. And then we do some same stuff for the icons. And then the other half of the code is just to add the toolbars for creating a new item and creating a new character. There's really not a lot here. It just looks a lot bigger than it is. The core of what's happening is in our actual code for our types. So the character and the item. If I go to the character script, let's hit F12, and see that there are attributes on just about every field that we've got here. Our icon has the preview field, which is making it show that little icon selector instead of a pop-up that has the single inline. We've got the name showing in a vertical group with the surname and the age, so that they're all stacked on top of each other. And then a horizontal group of enum toggle buttons to choose our character alignment. Then down below, we have our tab group with the starting inventory, the stats, and the equipment. 
This one hides the label of the skills just by using the hide label attribute and makes it look nice and pretty. Before I dive into the most useful attributes, the ones that prevent your design team or you in the future from accidentally breaking your project, I want to show you one of the coolest little hacks in here, and it's not really a hack, it's an awesome window that allows you to see all of your static variables. That's the static inspector. You pop this thing open and you can see all of your static data and modify it, including the time scale. This is one of the things that I use very often. I'll set my time scale down to zero, set it up to a one or maybe even up to a 10 if I need to speed things up. And I can do that while I'm playing and it just updates. I also use this for other static data so I can view and inspect and sometimes at runtime modify my own static data. Once you've grabbed Odin and put it into your project, and you can do that with the links down below, you're going to want to open up the Odin Attributes Overview. This pops up and shows you all of the different attributes available from Odin. There are quite a few of them, way more than I can cover in a single video, but I do want to show you some of the most important ones or the ones that I think will save you the most time. It starts off with Assets Only, which is, I think, probably one of the most powerful. It's one that will prevent you from having mistakes in your game when somebody accidentally assigns the wrong thing. I've had this happen many times where somebody spawned an NPC that was in the scene view or placed that NPC that was in the scene view as the prefab that's getting spawned by some spawner and then it causes errors. This will prevent that. The assets only will make it so that you can only assign a prefab to a field and the scene objects only will make it so that you can only apply, obviously, something from a scene object like a spawn point or some placed object that you might want to reference and you don't want to accidentally have a prefab in there. Two other attributes that are really handy for preventing errors are the required and required in attributes. Required makes it so that you must assign something to an object or to a field or get an error and required in allows you to specify when those things need to be assigned. So you may have things that only need to be assigned if it's a prefab or more likely things that only need to be assigned if the object is actually actually placed in the world. And now you can do that with the required in attribute. Another attribute that I really love is the child only one. So if you choose the child game objects only, it'll force it so that you can only assign an object that's a child of it. This is something that I use often when I have a big prefab hierarchy and I want to reference something that's like the foot or maybe the weapon point or the eyes of a character or something like that. And I don't want to accidentally have this be assigned to something else. Now designers can't mess that up. The color palette attribute allows you to have a nice consistent look for your game with almost no work involved. Bitmask enums get an automatic upgrade where you get this nice drop down and can select whatever you want, all or none. And enum paging becomes available with a simple attribute. So you can just go through and select in a list like that or do the normal drop down. I really like the progress bars because they look nice and flashy and they feel kind of gamey. But the thing that I find most useful are the tab groups where I can specify a group of data and just show this on the UI and put a whole bunch of data on or the show if groups where I can toggle and show data depending on whether or not it's relevant. Now I could probably go on about attributes for an hour or more. There's so much in there that you can do and so much that can easily improve the inspector. But now I wanna dive into one of the attributes that I use the most and probably is the one that I use the most and that's the button attribute. Adding the button attribute to a method allows you to just invoke the method by clicking on it. You can see a whole bunch of really cool examples of these buttons here that are modifying other things, changing things and changing the way that they look. You can customize the visual feel of these buttons and everything else in Odin. And you can even add icons. I think there are 1500 icons that you can now assign to your buttons so you can make them look very cool and fancy with no work. There's also an inline button option that I think is handy too. I've used this quite a few times Times, especially when I want to work with data around a specific field. You add this to a field and it will actually call a method with that name. So here I'm calling the A method every time I click on it. It doesn't do anything. You can see it just does a debug.log A or B and that's pretty much it. But in this code, I could do whatever it is that I want, like fix up a reference to some missing data, um, go open something or assign something. And that's one of the last things that I wanted to show. When you're looking at data in Odin, you can actually very easily 
pop open a custom inspector or a custom little mini editor window that shows you that data without leaving. This is one of the handiest things and makes it so that I don't have to open up multiple editor windows, right click and hit add new inspector tab or anything like that. I just hit the button and now the thing that I wanna look at pops up in a new window. Now this is just a surface level view of what Odin can do. There's a whole lot more to it and I definitely recommend you try it out. There's a lot in the serializer, like being able to serialize dictionaries. That was a huge one for me, something that I always wished Unity could do. And then there are things like the table that I use all the time and the table matrix like you saw for the inventory, but you can expand on that even more. And I recommend that you check out this video by Christina Creates Games where she took that table matrix and built out a full on tile editor for her game. I think this is a very good example of how you can use Odin in your project and just another example of developers using it day to day to make things easier, save time, and not have to spend all of their time building tools and instead get to focus on building their game to get their game finished, done, and out there in front of people and let people play it instead of just making fun custom editor tools. Custom editors are great, cool editor tools are amazing, but that's probably not what you wanna do. So let Odin do that for you. Just grab it at the link down below, install it, and take a look at a couple of those attributes when you get a moment. You'll have a lot of fun with it and it's definitely going to really improve your workflow. If this was helpful, please drop a comment down below and hit the thumbs up button. And if there's something specific in Odin that you really love that you think that everybody should be using, drop a comment about that too. I tried to cover a lot, but there's a whole lot in there, like I said. So there's probably something awesome that I missed and I'd love to hear what it is.